Chapter 9, Online Business, Web Design, by Matt Glover. Importance of Design The design, accessibility, and usability of an e-commerce site are critical in achieving a high conversion rate, the percentage of visitors who eventually decide to make a purchase. In fact, it's so important that research shows that users will, if they cannot find what they want on a website in four seconds, they will often leave and never return to the website. Coding, HTML. HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, is the basic web page coding and controls how a web page appears. It can be written using a simple text editor, but most website designers prefer advanced programs, or what you see is what you get programs. And a, a major, majorly used program is um, Adobe Dreamweaver to create websites. A major problem with HTML, though, is that it contains the website's content and page styling information, like colors and fonts. But it is a problem when widespread changes need to be made on a website because of the fact that if a website's uh, design needs to be redone, if, if all the styling and content is on each HTML file, then you'd have to go through each HTML file individually and change everything. And there's also times when website developers need to present the same data in different ways to different people, such as mobile users not see, um, seeing a website differently on their phones, so they need to be able, website designers need to be able to make it so they could see it just as well on their phones. And the solution is in the next slide. Coding, CSS. An HTML file can contain the page content and assign name styles to it, while a CSS style sheet defines the appearance of those styles. When a style property in the CSS file is changed, all items marked as headline will change automatically in every page where the style sheet is used. So an example of this would be if you had a cascading style sheet and you put the background color or background picture as um, as just a black picture with a, a business's logo on it. So, so what, if you wanted to change that to a different picture, and you wanted to redesign the site so every single web page had that new picture instead of the old one, if you edit the cascading style sheet and you linked, you linked all your other HTML files for each web page to that to that same style sheet, then every web page will um will reflect the new changes without having to go into each HTML file because they're all linked to that CSS file. Data-driven websites. On some sites, the content of a web page is unknown at the design time and will not be decided until the user performs an action. For example, a user could search for an item on an e-commerce site and web developers could not simply create a static web page for every possible search that could be made. These pages are data-driven, which involves the contents being fetched from a database using a query run when the page is requested by the user. The data is stored in a back-end database like SQSL Server or MySQL. Advantages of using a database One set of data could be used for multiple uses in a company. For example, product data and prices could be displayed on the company website while the same data plus stock levels could be used in the warehouse to manage inventory. Also, for organizations who own physical stores, databases could be connected to point-of-sale systems, which improves data integrity by using one set of data because it removes redundant copies, which could be inconsistent. Interactive websites. Scripting languages like JavaScript enhance web pages and make them more interactive. And some things I could do include drop-down menus or images that change when the mouse hovers over them. Adobe Flash and Microsoft Silverlight add more functionality and are often used for games, animations, embedded video, interactive quizzes, and other applications on different websites. Java is a programming language used to create applets that run inside web pages, and it's not the same thing as JavaScript. Java applets must obey a series of security restrictions to make them safer for internet use, and the picture below represents an example of a Java applet. Disadvantages of interactive websites one disadvantage is that users may be unwilling to download and install a plugin in order to view a web page. And this is a big deal because Flash, Silverlight, and Java all require browser plugins to be used in order for the website to work correctly. Another disadvantage is that web designers also need to ensure that the use of multimedia isn't overused because it will take up bandwidth and it will increase the load time. HTML5, the latest version of the HTML standard. It previously acquired a plugin to achieve some features and as such is not supported by many old browsers. 
but it will become an attractive alternative for web designers to incorporate multimedia into their pages in the future. Web page compatibility. Web designers need to test pages carefully to ensure that they appear and function the same way across different browsers, operating systems, and screen resolutions. One solution is for web developers to code their websites to direct users with old browsers to alternative web pages if the default web page isn't compatible. This is a big deal because oftentimes older older browsers won't work with some websites and this is a big deal because of the fact that if they want somebody to visit their website it needs to work. So by doing this they can allow older um, browser users to visit the website as well. Website features. Sitemaps show an overview of all pages on a website and help users locate specific pages quickly. An effective site should have a good balance between the number of links on any page, the breadth, and the number of links needed to reach a given page, the depth. Breadcrumb trails can be used to let users see exactly where they are on the website as a whole. They serve as a visual aid and allow users to jump back to previous sections. Cookies. Cookies are small text files stored in a special folder on your hard disk by some of the websites you visit. They could be anything from the last time you visited the site, or the time you spent on the site, or the exact uh, web pages that you visited. They're often used for websites to learn more about the visitors so that they can offer better services. First versus third party cookies. First party cookies are stored by the site you are visiting. They might be used for remembering that you're logged in if the site involves a, a login and password combination. Third party cookies involve the advertisements that you see when you visit a website. They're also called tracking cookies because these advertising companies have ads on many sites. Reading the same cookie on each site allows them to identify you as the same user and your browsing habits help them to use targeted advertising so that they can learn your interests and display advertisements that um, suit these interests. Designing for accessibility. Web page designers need to take into account disabled users when they're designing websites. One technique to help out disabled users is to add an alternate attribute that will add a human language description to images since a screen reader will merely read the URL of an image, which will help a blind user because it will simply name the URL rather than the actual description of the picture, so they won't, they won't know what they're seeing. Designing for accessibility continued. For colorblind users, it is better to make links stand out by highlighting it with another method besides color, such as underlining. This is pretty obvious because if a colorblind user is using a website, using different colors won't, won't help things stand out. Also, coding the navigation links at the start of the page allows the screen reader to read these links first rather than reading the rest of the content of the website. If these navigation links are at the bottom of the web page, the screen reader will have to read all of the content near the top before it gets to this. Web CMS. Web Content Management System is what this stands for, and it enables users to post information onto websites with minimal knowledge of HTML or CSS. The entries are stored in a database and extracted and published into a web page as needed. Publishing a website. So the first step to publishing a website is to choose a web host. Once a website has been created, it needs to be uploaded to a web host so that users can access it. They run software called web servers, which are responsible for receiving requests from users and returning the web pages. And the step two is to purchase a domain name. There's many websites to purchase domain names such as GoDaddy, Namecheap, and many other different types. It's very good to choose a short, a short domain name that's very concise so that visitors won't, will be able to easy, easily remember it or if it's in an advertisement people will e easily be able to remember the domain. And step three is to upload the site. Um, the way to upload it is via file transfer protocol uh, application which involves once you're done with the website you, you upload the HTML files and pictures and everything in one folder the you you upload that created website and then that way it gets stored onto the servers and people can look at it and then step four is to get the site indexed and here are the sources and credits creator of introduction and closing videos and PowerPoint presentation is me and Matt Glover and then under that are the uh, links that I use for the information presented in this PowerPoint.